So organic synthesis and arenes, uh, we did first two questions from this. Question number three, uh, there are over 1,000 chemical compounds in coffee and their effects are there, psychological effects are there, are subject considerable speculation and research. Um, so chlorogenic acid responsible for acidic taste of a coffee and it is an antioxidant and it's also been um, shown to slightly decrease uh, blood pressure. And caffeic acid, cunic acid, estuin are also present in the coffee, as you can see here. Another way of drawing the structure of caffeine is shown. Uh, bonding represented by this diagram of a caffeine differ from the given in the passage. Explain uh, what this diagram indicate about the bonding in caffeine and stating the effect of the structures. Like, this is the what it was stated in the beginning, and this is what actually it's it is. So, how the two differ from each other, or what is the difference between them? So you can see the benzene ring is the main difference. One is having a delocalized benzene, um, delocalized electrons are there. The first structure, the it's it shows like it has a fixed position. So the in a benzene ring, the electron system or the electrons are delocalized. And these delocalized electrons which are present, as a result of these uh, delocalized electron, it, it will undergo substitution reaction rather than addition reaction. And this these low, delocalized electron increase the stability of a caffeine. So, First, this, this is having a delocalized electrons. What is the effect of delocalized electron? If it was the first structure, as you can see, the bonds are there. So according to this structure, it should undergo addition reaction. But because of the delocalized electrons, it will, it will be more stable and it will undergo substitution reaction. So uh, the three points, which you should mention, you will mention the different, the first difference is uh, the, the structure which is represented in a caffeine, it contain delocalized electrons, which increase the stability. And as a result, it will undergo Substitution rather than addition. And you can also refer like nitrogen is also involved in there's also a pi one sigma bond is there between the carbon atom like this carbon and nitrogen there's one sigma another one is a pi electron between them. So just why caffeine is much weaker base than a primary amine such as ethyl amine, even though um, the right hand ring has two amine group. So you can see the, the two amine. What is the meaning of a base? Both base is a proton acceptor, and how it accepts proton it depends on the lone pair. But if you see this caffeine, the lone pair is actually involved in the bonding. That lone pair is involved in forming a um pi pi electron system so alkalinity depends on the tendency to accept proton but in case of this in a caffeine the nitrogen which are involved here the lone pair of the nitrogen is involved in the bonding with carbon forming a delocalized so the lone pair is incorporated with a delocalized electron so which reduce the tendency of this caffeine to attract the proton. That's why it will become a weak base. Is it uh, clear? Part two. Why caffeine is a weak base then? 
So the loan payroll base means the proton acceptor. So the loan pair of the nitrogen involved in the delocalized electrons as a result it reduce the tendency to accept the proton a, a 200 cm cube cup of a coffee a coffee contain approximately 20 85 milligrams of a caffeine calculate the concentration of a caffeine in moles per decimeter cube um, give your answer to appropriate number of three uh, significant figures. So we usually use three significant figure. So we need the concentration. What is the concentration? Concentration is moles divided by volume. We have the volume. The volume is 200 cm cube. We divide by 1000. So it will be 0 0.2 decimeter cube. The mass is in milligram, so it will be 85 into 10 power minus 3. So to get the concentration, concentration is moles divided by volume. So moles 85 into 10 power minus 3 divided by molar mass. So for molar mass, you have to check the structure of a caffeine. Because uh, from structure, you can work out the molar mass. So if you count the carbon atoms, we have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, better I number them. So it will be easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight carbon atoms are there. So I can say C8. Then... Um, you can count oxygen. You can see one, two oxygen are there and one, two, three, four nitrogen are there. And what about uh, hydrogen? Because this will be CH3. So three hydrogen here. All bonds are occupied. This will be CH3. This will not have any. This will be CH. Uh, this will be C only because you can e even work out from this one. You can also work out from because they will have the same molecular formula. So this will be CH3 as the bonds are shown as a fix. This will be C, not H because uh, all four bonds are involved. This will be CH3 and here rest all four. So three, six, and nine. One, two, th uh, this will also have hydrogen because three bonds are there, so 10. So it will have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So C8 was there, N4 is there, O2 is there, and hydrogen three, six, nine, and plus one, 10. So 10. So this will, using this, we'll work out the molecular mass. And as we use the moles equal mass in gram over molar mass, we'll get the concentration. The removal of a caffeine from a body is a first order reaction with a half life between three to seven, seven hours per adult. An adult drink uh, coffee contain a total of 160 milligram of a caffeine. Calculate the nearest hour, the minimum time needed to remove, uh, needed the amount of caffeine in their body to drop to 20. So when we intake, we have 160, but we want to find how much time it will take to drop to, so we have say 160 after half life, it will be 80 milligram. After another half life, it will be 40 milligram. After another half life, it will be 20 milligram. So how many half lives are there? It means three half lives. And we need the minimum time. So minimum time means we have to take a minimum value. 
ठीक है मैक्सिमम इज सेवन एंड द मिनिमम मैक्सिमम इज सेवन एंड द मिनिमम इज थ्री सो मीन विल टेक अ मिनिमम वैल्यू एज वी नीड अ मिनिमम टाइम सो थ्री हाफ लाइफ आर देयर This take three hours. This also take three hours. This also take three hours. So what the total duration? It will take nine hours for the um, the amount of a caffeine to drop from one hundred and sixty milligram to twenty milligram. Chlorogenic acid is an ester of Caffeinic acid, a compound that is present in all plants, suggests a student suggests that the caffeinic uh, caffeic acid could be synthesized by electrophilic substitution reaction of one two hydro dihydroxy benzene. Draw the mechanism of this electrophilic. So we want to produce this because a student suggests that caffeinic acid. Could be synthesized by electrophilic substitution of this. So, uh, one two dihydroxy. So we have one two di anywhere we can attach any one of, but they should be next to each other. But we want like this is what we have. So one two dihydro dihydroxy uh, benzene is there. We want to add this carbon chain. the whole carbon chain is added to so how to represent the electrophilic because whenever we uh, want to add this like uh, carbon chain that is alkylation so we normally use aluminum trichloride and acyl like to produce as a electrophile so what electrophile we want This is the electrophile we need, like OH. Then we have double bond. O is there. Then this. This electrophile we need. So with this electro, this is the electrophile which we need. We want to produce. So how this electrophile can be produced? So we can have this uh, same compound. and the chlorine is attached and first we will react with alcl3 because when we react with alcl3 so as a result what will happen it will produce an electrophile and plus it will produce alcl4 with a charge minus and the electrophile is there now uh, the, the after producing you have to show the electrophile production after producing the electrophile now the mechanism So we have this electrophile which we produce. It will attack on the benzene ring. So we draw an arrow from the benzene ring to this electrophile. Then it will form intermediate in which the hydrogen and this. um hydrogen next one state the hydrogen will break the bond so it is ho skeletal formula i have to write and this is linked with the benzene ring and the uh, hydrogen will be there and the ring should open because uh, it has adjusted one hydrogen so i should open the ring and put a positive charge and then what will happen this hydrogen will break the bond like hydrogen will be lost as a proton then we'll have the final product uh, as caffeinic acid is there and this hydrogen h plus The H plus which is produced will react with AlCl four. In the last stage, it will produce AlCl three plus HCl. So AlCl three is actually actually acting as a catalyst for this reaction. Is it uh, clear?
the final product just i have to draw final product but because of space i did not draw then we have deduce a structure of cunic acid which com combines with caffeinic acid and chlorogenic acid so two um, so we have a chlorogenic acid is there and caffeinic acid we have to how they can combine you have to check the final result like which region they can combine like what are the parts that can combine with each other so you you can see the OH is there, this is a structure of chlorogenic acid and this is a structure of caffeinic acid. So they can link with each other by removing H and OH. So did you say structure which combined with caffeinic acid? So uh, this is a chlorogenic acid, sorry, uh, chlorogenic acid is formed we, by combination of a cunic acid with caffeinic acid. Caffeinic acid is given. So this is what is formed. So how this structure could be formed? So if I remove the caffeinic acid, the part of a caffeinic acid, so I can easily deduce like if I erase this part. Because... Even this O is also there, but because H and OH will combine with each other. So, and we put H here. Means this will be the structure of cunic acid. Because this is caffeinic acid and this is chlorogenic acid, which is an ester. So, as this ester linkage is there. So, mean this part, if H is removed from here, the other will remove OH. So, we've just put OH and we remove this whole structure we get the structure of cunic acid. The structure of the acetone is shown uh, with one proton environment label. Identify the other proton, other proton environments and label them as B and C. And then in a high resolution splitting pattern, we have to predict. So how many hydrogen environments are there? You can see uh, this does not contain hydrogen. So there's no hydrogen environment. This will be CH, this will be CH3. But this CH3 is different from this CH3. So this is A, example, this is B, this one is C, and this one is D. Or it's up to you. You can label like this as B, this as C. It does not make difference. It, it's up to you any one of them according to then this splitting pattern for a the a neighbor how we predict the splitting pattern it is n plus one where n is a number of neighbor hydrogen this does not have neighbor so zero plus one it will be one so what we call the splitting pattern of a one we call that as a singlet this is b for us which is ch3 but splitting pattern depends on the neighbor. The neighbor is having one hydrogen. So if the neighbor is having one, so N plus one uh, means one plus one makes two. So it will be doublet. For C, the neighbor three and this, remember OH we will not consider because like this is this OH is it oxygen, it's like breaking down the sequence. So neighbor, even though this like this is O O and H is there, but we consider oxygen is there. Like remember always when OH is there and there's CH3. So when we talk about the neighbor, we say neighbor does not have hydrogen. Like neighbor is not hydrogen, like oxygen does not allow it to couple with this. That's why. But if it was like this, CH3 was there and then CH2 was there, then the neighbor, even though carbon is attached, but the neighbor hydrogen can couple. But when neighbor oxygen is there, it cannot couple. So this will be 3 plus 1 as a 3 plus 1 makes 4. So then it will be a quartet. And for D, when you, as I mentioned, the, this OH, this hydrogen cannot couple as the neighbor does not have any hydrogen, it's not like 
the student consider if it is written CH3, then we consider this as neighbor. No, this hydrogen neighbor we check. So the oxygen doesn't prevent it from coupling. So again, zero plus one, it will be a singlet. So there will be two singlet, one doublet will be there and one quartet. So this was question three from organic synthesis.